my goodness, the summer has been just flying away. I'm sure you guys are all feeling it as well. I can't believe we're at the end of June already. This video that you're about to watch is a month in the making. I am very proud of it. I hope you find lots of food inspo and just like fun family moments in this video. I am mostly focused on snacks and the things that I prepared when we went camping because I know a lot of you guys just love to find grab and go ideas that you know everybody can enjoy all ages. But I also wanted to include all of the meal inspo that we've had over the past month. I know that you guys find that helpful and just fun, right? Who doesn't enjoy some food content? So I hope you enjoy this video and without any further ado, let's get started. So today I'm making whoopie pies for Josh's family camping trip. Now, I didn't know if I wanted to call these a snack or not, but hey, if you're craving an Oreo or a Tasty Cake or something, these are gonna be at least slightly better for you. And plus, if you're gonna be eating junk food, you might as well be eating something that tastes like it's been made with love. Make sure if you're making this recipe, you look at the ingredients for the top section and the bottom section before you think you have enough of ingredients. I am at the very bottom of my, my vanilla. I have just enough and that's, yeah, I looked at the recipe and just saw, oh, two teaspoons vanilla, we're good. But the icing takes three teaspoons vanilla, so yeah, you just have to pay attention. Yes, I know they make little batter dough cookie dough scoopers. I have just gone through so many of them. I feel like the spring mechanism always breaks because I use it on too stiff of dough. So I just haven't replaced the one I have, but I need to for recipes like this where the batter is more thin and runny. Not only would it be easier, but my shots would look a little more professional as well as I'm trying to film on YouTube. But you guys, this is real life. A spoon works just fine. You don't need all the handy dandy gadgets. For wrapping them up, this is kind of a technique that I learned from a Mennonite bakery. You just stretch out a big, long roll of plastic wrap, and then, yeah, just pretty much do what I'm doing here. Slice it up, and it saves on plastic and on time. And you would not have to wrap these individually, but I'm taking them along camping. It's nice to just grab one with your meal. You'll see here in a second what we serve for supper. It is gonna be so delicious. I'm so excited for it. I mean, I hope it works out. I'm filming this ahead of time, but yeah, I'm really excited for the supper we're having. I feel like we go a little bit more complicated with camping with Josh's family just because the family is smaller. We're only serving like 19 people and some of those are kids. I think last year we smoked a brisket. You guys can go watch that video. But yeah, I just thought that whoopie pies would be a nice quick desserty addition and we don't have to eat it for supper. Josh's family is not huge on desserts, but I figured if we don't eat them for supper, they're super easy to grab and eat later on or as a snack. So there you go. I guess this does fit in the snack recipe video. <laughs> okay, this recipe I wanna share with you takes these ultra thin salty pretzel sticks. Just kidding, you can use whatever pretzels you want, but honestly, these are the best. And I don't even know why I'm sharing this recipe with you because I'm sure you've seen it so many times before, but honestly, it's just the best. It's a crowd pleaser. I make it pretty much when we go anywhere. And I like to go pretty heavy on the seasonings, especially the dill. You could use fresh dill. I'm just using dill weed here. And of course, lots of ranch. You can use whatever oil you prefer. I love to mix everything up in a mason jar because one, it has measurements on the side, which is so handy. And then two, you just screw on the lid and shake it all up and everything gets incorporated really well. 
I have tried this with avocado oil and I just don't prefer the taste, so I'm using the bad oil here. I know, I know, but it is a treat. And I'm just pouring this all over the pretzels and tossing them to coat evenly. They are good right like this. I mean, look at me there, I just grabbed one. They're so good. But you probably wanna do the final step of spreading them out on a baking sheet so that they can dry out in the oven. I put the oven at 200 degrees and I'll just stir it periodically, maybe every 10 minutes for, honestly, I don't leave them in very long at all because I find that they just need a little bit of time in the oven to make the oil dry up a little bit. I don't wanna rebake the pretzels and make them any darker. That's just kind of the method I do. You can find so many different recipes out there but I just wanted to show you this one just to spark your memory if you've forgotten about this one and also to give you that mason jar trick. I made this recipe for Angola by the Bay. If you guys did not see that video, definitely watch that one. It is full of so many good recipes and just different things we ate while we were there. I just love that video. We'll definitely be re-watching that again and again in the future. And since we're in Pennsylvania, the land of pretzels, just kidding, but Seriously, I feel like pretzels are a big thing here in Pennsylvania. Actually, right down the road in York, they make so many different pretzel and snack items. But for this recipe, if you can call it a recipe, guys, I'm using the buttery waffle pretzels and I'm just laying them out. I only had a few left in the bag because my kids had gotten into them. You guys know how that is, right? When you have ingredients for something special and they disappear, but it's fine. I made the ones that I had. And so I'm guessing you can get these little chocolate wafers all over the place, but I like to get them at my bulk food store. They're always a really good price. I double up two of them with the flat sides together and just put them in the middle of the pretzel. Again, you can pick any kind of pretzel really that has a middle. And my kids love to help me with this as well. They love these snacks. I guess it's like a pretzel candy. That's kind of what we call it. But after you do that, you put them in the oven at 200 again or the lowest setting that you can and just get the chocolate soft and then pull it right back out of the oven and put on the M&Ms, press them into the soft chocolate and let them cool if you can resist. <laughs> I love to use seasonal colored M&Ms because guys, they're the freshest. Always buy the next season's M&Ms that just got put out because they will taste better, I promise. This is a summer classic. I try to do this different times throughout the year, but we'll often fall off the bandwagon and forget about it. And then in the summer, I pull this idea out again. It's basically our own personal family vending machine, I guess we'll say. And I pretty much just find all different kinds of snacks. I try to find some that my kids love, some that are a little healthier, just kind of have a mix of sweet and salty, mostly salty in this case here, but I'll just put them into this acrylic container and have it ready to go. I will take this with us traveling, set it between the seats, and when the kids need something to do, a little break, I will pull out the snacks and let them choose their own. They feel like they're shopping, it's so much fun. And I always like to do items that I don't have to worry too much about melting in the vehicle because honestly, that's when I use them the most. But you can pull this out by the pool or if you get home from something and the kids are hungry and you just wanna grab them something quick. Super nice, super easy, and you know, share them with the neighbor kids. So after all the packing and prepping, we were off to our first camping trip of the summer and we went with Josh's family to a private campground that it was just our family. It's called Rustic Timbers near Lewistown, PA. And this weekend is an annual trip. It is always full of tons of cousin time, good food, lots of time in the outdoors and in nature. We always go down to the creek and splash and we always love watching for the trains. They're quite the novelty. I'm setting up to make iced coffees for everybody who wants. The best way to do it for like a big crowd is as much as I would love to make everybody an iced latte, I'm not gonna brew that many espresso shots. So I always just do cold brew because you can make a large amount. I got the biggest French press I could find. I think this is like six cups. And then I have some homemade, uh, this is brown sugar vanilla, homemade simple syrup. Or if I had my maple syrup, I think I brought that somewhere too. I'm not sure where it's at, but that's really good. And then I got really good creamer from Maple Hoff and then milk. So that's all it's gonna really take. Um, and I got disposable cups. I got the small ones since I'm 
I only have six cups of cold brew for everybody. So anyway, I decided to do the smaller version. Um, but look what happened. I got, I went, I love getting disposable cups. I get them at the restaurant store, which I think you can get that online. It's called the web restaurant store. But anyway, I don't know what happened. I got a faulty pack. A few of them have the hole punched in the middle, but most of them, there's no hole. So I have to like take a knife and like stab an X in the top. So annoying, but now I know next time to check. I thought at first I got picked off the wrong palette, but some of them are punched and some of them are not. So manufacturer error, I guess. And then I love doing colored straws when you have a crowd because then everybody remembers which straw they had or they are disposable cups. They could easily write their names on. That would probably be the most obvious. <laughs> much about our families but Josh has three brothers and two sisters so that's a family of six and it's just so funny our wedding picture from 10 years ago he has all these little brothers you know and now they're all giant like they're all the same size the in-laws and his little brothers everybody it's just so funny when they're all gathered around and they're like, grilling together or you know trying to best each other in different sports and stuff it's just so crazy how Yes, they might be a couple of feet taller than they were 10 years ago, but you know what? There's still some boy left in them. They still like to prove who can be on top. And there's something about a family weekend that is just so nice because there's more adults than kids, at least in our cases with Josh and I being the oldest. You know, we have little kids, but there's still aunts and uncles who don't yet. And so, you know, the grandkids get a lot of attention. And I feel like it's a vacation for us parents, you know, as well. Sometimes I feel like with camping, it can be a lot of work. But yeah, with more hands on deck, it definitely feels like you're all sharing the, the load a little bit, which kids aren't a load. That's the reason we go camping, right? Just to see how much they love it. So if you watched last year's camping vlog, this scene looks familiar. It's not in the middle of the night. It's only like 9.30. But we are actually prepping, what, is it five pork ro five beef roast? Chuck roast. Chuck roast. Yeah, yeah we have tons of chuck roast in our freezer. We are excited. What, we practiced this on Tuesday, was it? Yeah. And it was so good. So I'm using the Lean Barbecue, their Ancho Espresso one. It looks like blurry, why? There it is. And we're gonna just smoke what? Smoke it all day tomorrow, pretty much. Yeah. Put it in an ice chest to have it like percolate a little bit, and then we're gonna pull it, and we're gonna have barbecue beef sandwiches. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to make like sprinkle the top. Sure. There you go. Yep. I'm going to make like a tangy coleslaw to go with it. We have cheese, we have pickles, what you wouldn't mayo, you said. Keep us mayo and everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm so excited. I have to show you tomorrow the whole setup, but we're doing potato slices and grilled asparagus, maybe grilled mushrooms unless we save this for like a snack. Ew. Is this too much blood for y'all? <laughs> and then I just got like the Luigi's Italian ice for dessert and whoopie pies, so it's gonna be good. minute threw in mushrooms because I thought they would make a great snack over the fire and we actually decided to make them along with our supper because our asparagus is like thick I hate thick asparagus I like the thin stuff anyway so we're gonna have smoked asparagus or grilled asparagus and grilled mushrooms so Josh is cleaning them now we're gonna we, <laughs> we're just literally dumping stuff together so hopefully it's good we have bacon and cream cheese some minced garlic I had along and then my mom-in-law has this Kinder's brown sugar rub that we're gonna sprinkle all over everything before we put it on the grill. 
So, I mean, how can you go wrong? It's going to be good. Oh, and salt and pepper, of course. But yeah, I think they'll be good, don't you? I'm excited. I think there's a lot of mushroom lovers here, so I think they'll be a big hit. But yeah, we're basically going to be in the kitchen all afternoon. Bonnie, what are you doing? Is that why you're in here? Are you offering, are you going to be helpful first? I want a piece of candy first. You want your piece of candy and then you'll be helpful? I have raised a negotiator. Five minutes later and Ivani is still shopping the candy bowl. Still haven't made your decision yet? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to see if what's special one. But he might want a lollipop. That's what I would want. I would go ask him. Yeah, tell him to come in. So yes, we were here for three and a half days total, and of course the creek is always a highlight. Um, I wanted to round out this little trip and show you how beautiful this little swimming hole is. Right by the bridge where the train goes by, we saw a fisherman come by on his kayak, pulling a very strong Whoa. musky, and we helped him land it, or my brother-in-law did. That's a bear fresh. And they measured it and set it free again. It was quite the experience for the kids. And yeah, it was just a beautiful, relaxing time. I could just listen to the sounds of the creek and sit here all day. But every good vacation must come to an end, as this one did as well. But not for long. We'll be back in two weeks or in a couple minutes in this video to the same location, just with a different group of people, with new people to hang out with, new adventures to complete, and of course, new recipes to cook. So we had one week off where we just lived life and then the next week we were getting ready to go camping again, this time with my extended Weaver family. More on that later, but I have some five star recipes I wanna share with you getting ready for this camping trip. First of all are these chewy monster cookies. I've shared this recipe before, it's on my website. You guys love it. And no, that is not a typo. There is no flour in this recipe. It's the oatmeal that is the grain that holds everything together and boy, it is so delicious. Yes, I made the dough the night before, but you could totally do it all in one shot. As a mom, I'm just always cooking in the pockets of time that I have. And I love these monster cookies because it's really fun to tailor the M&Ms to the season that you're in. Easter monster cookies look really pretty here. As you can see, I did 4th of July ones. I'm sure you guys know this already, but always buy, if you do buy candy, <laughs> buy the candy that's for the next season. It's always the freshest. It tastes the best. If you're gonna be eating something that's not great for you, it might as well taste phenomenal, right? You know, don't buy the stale closeout candies. It's just my opinion. But this recipe is best if you get the cookies out of the oven just slightly before you think they're done. You don't want them to look very brown at all. Just when you can start telling a difference in the coloring on the edge of the cookie from the middle of the cookie when they look like two different colors, that's when you wanna take them off the sheet. It's gonna be kind of frustrating to get them off nicely and because they're gonna be so gooey and falling apart. But as they sit on that cooling rack, that peanut butter kind of of like gels up and the oatmeal soaks in. I don't know what happens, but they kind of finish on the rack. And then when they're completely cool, I like to just store them in a Tupperware container and they freeze really well.
Okay, we're just going to have a moment of silence for the refrigerator dill pickles. Guys, this is the best recipe ever. I cannot take credit for it. All credit goes to Pinch and Swirl. I will link their recipe in the description box. I make these so often in the summertime and even in the winter. If we don't have them in the fridge, my five-year-old is always begging for sour pickles is what she calls them because guys, they are very tangy, but in the best way possible. They are so good on sandwiches, so good straight up plain. They are crispy and dilly and there's no sugar in this recipe, only salt and vinegar and fresh dill if you have it. You can use dried as well. I'm definitely trying to influence you to make this recipe because I know it will become a staple in your household. Make that pasta salad. Not only is it so colorful, but I love the balsamic vinegar in it. It just adds something. It's super good. Try it out, and of course, you can customize it however you'd like. You're about to see me making three different components to what I guess we'll call elevated parfaits, but me and my aunt were in charge of a breakfast for the camping weekend coming up here. And so I was going to take charge of the breakfast parfait bowls, I guess we'll call it. So it's not an acai bowl. This is for a crowd that would be too complicated, but it's basically a parfait in a bowl. And then you can top it with like really pretty ingredients. You'll see here in a minute, coconut, pepitas, strawberries, all the fruits, bananas, chia seeds, everything is gonna go on top of these. But first I made the granola from scratch. There's so many good granola recipes out there. I rarely make the same one twice and I don't make granola a ton, but this one was really good. If you like clusters, this is not the recipe for you. Although I did get a ton of compliments when we were camping. I, I like the clumps. I really do. Um, but it, as far as the taste, it was amazing. It was perfectly sweet, not too much, not overkill. And the crunch of it was just perfection. And it's basically a normal recipe. There's really not anything too noteworthy about it. As far as the process, it takes some graham crackers and coconut and you stir every so often until it becomes nice and caramelized and brown. And it just goes so well with yogurt. And then I looked up online how to preserve berries because this week, in Pennsylvania and Lancaster County, the strawberry game was amazing. There was so many ripe, fresh strawberries, but I had to pick them on Wednesday because we were leaving Friday morning for camping and I knew I was gonna have to pack everything up Thursday. So I had to pick them on a Wednesday and we weren't gonna eat them till Sunday. Do the math guys, you know that strawberries don't last that long, at least the fresh ones. The Cross Legacy on Instagram, she went viral for her fruit preserving methods. And so I thought I'd give it a try and it worked guys. The strawberries were amazing and I actually kept another jar for an extra week and they were still good. Now here I am making the yogurt and I use yogurt from my husband's work at September Farm. This stuff is great plain, but I love to do this extra little step when it comes to making yogurt for a crowd and I add Cool Whip. You don't need a lot, maybe one and a half to two cups per quart of yogurt and you just whip that all up and it gets all just, I don't know, I love the texture and it adds a little extra sweetness. Guys, I was so cute here. I thought five quarts of yogurt for 50 people. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I was laying in bed awake one night and I'm thinking, what in the world did I just do? I bought five quarts of yogurt for 50 people. That is nowhere right. So I sent Josh to work the next day and said, don't forget to bring home five more quarts of vanilla yogurt. And so that's what he did. And yes, we had, I think two 
leftover, but seriously, I was way off. It's so hard to get proportions correct for a large crowd. I am still learning that self-admittedly. And then here, these clips are actually of when we came back from camping. Don't worry, I'll show you the whole camping trip. But we had leftovers, as I said, of the yogurt and the berries and the granola. So I'm turning that into yogurt bark. My kids love this and it's very simple and easy. It's like I told Ivani, it's almost like making a pizza. You just smear out the yogurt, added honey to this batch because I do not have Cool Whip in this yogurt. So it's honey and yogurt together spread out on a pan. And then you just put whatever toppings you want on. We use the leftover stuff, the berries, the pepitas. Pepitas are so good and salty and crunchy. They're pumpkin seeds, if you did not know. Fun fact. And then you just pop them into the freezer. And I don't know why I didn't have any footage of me cutting it up, but once it's firm and frozen in the freezer, you can either break it apart like bark, or what I do is actually take a knife and chop it in kind of fun sections. And then I store it in the freezer and let the kids pull it out when they want an icy treat, like a popsicle or something. These are a little more healthy, a little more filling. And yeah, we really enjoy them. And now to our camping weekend. I actually drove up early Friday morning and everybody else got there later in the afternoon slash evening. I had to drive up by myself because Josh needed to be at work. And then also he had a ball game that he wanted to go to since he'd been missing so many ball games from all of our other camping trips. And I was kind of excited to just do some solo camping for a little bit. You know, we only got there like five hours before the big crew showed up and we did enjoy ourselves. We had a lot of fun um, just enjoying the fire. Do you guys see these rainbow flames? I'll link them below. No trip is complete without them. We got to go paddle boarding the one day, just going on the river. It was kind of low, but not too bad. We did scrape a couple places, but I don't know. It was super fun. I got to take my paddle board out on the water for the first time ever. The train went by. I had Vani with me, and then Fletcher went with Josh. Also, camping has changed a lot since I was a kid. <laughs> my aunt brought the bounce house. Like, what spoiled little kids we got here? <laughs> um, of course, the weekend was full of so much good food and... I don't know. I just really love seeing all my cousins grown up with their kids and seeing my aunts. They're always full of good advice. And of course, they help out with the little crew so much that us moms get to relax a little bit. It's always really appreciated. We play sports and we don't take ourselves too seriously, but it's always fun to get in a little competition. Volleyball for sure. Some knockout. I just love how when you go camping, the kids occupy themselves for the most part, at least my five and four year old. And so us adults actually get to do some like fun stuff again you like we did back before there was children. I don't know. I'm really enjoying the stage of motherhood. I don't have a baby this summer and I'm really enjoying it to the fullest. And then back to the whole point of this video, which is to show you some food inspo. Here is our breakfast that we did. My aunt made these amazing breakfast casseroles that have sausage gravy and biscuits and eggs and meat and cheese. It was just so good. She made them last year and everybody was requesting her to make them again. So we had that and then we had my parfait bar. I made two examples and then people went through the line and kind of made their own at the very end two people came down I was like hey you want to take the samples and they were like yeah sure so no food went wasted and I think it was a pretty kid-friendly food as well like I said this granola went together so well with this type of food and then I just had to give Josh props he washed the dishes after breakfast go him <laughs> Okay, so let's end out this portion of camping by showing you some train footage, courtesy of Eric Burkholder, Jana's husband. He got a drone and he just had to test it out. And yeah, he got some pretty cool shots.
Okay, so we still have one more camping trip that I need to get ready for. This one is with a bunch of my high school friends, both in my grade and the grade below me. And we had to travel pretty far for this one. So we were in charge of a breakfast, but I wanted to make something sweet for a snack, maybe around the campfire. And so I ran across this Snickers dupe on Pinterest. Basically, you use a date and you have to pit all the dates first. I got these at Sam's Club and it was actually really easy to pit them. And then I crushed up a bunch of pecans. The version that I will link below actually calls for peanuts, but I had pecans and so that's what I was using. And then you fill each date with some peanut butter. I did creamy, next time I would do crunchy. I think it would be better. And then you put some nuts on top of the peanut butter and the peanut butter keeps everything together. Then you guessed it, you roll it in chocolate and you add some coconut oil to the chocolate, not only for it to melt nicely, but also it gives such a good flavor. I can taste this. I buy the unrefined coconut oil and you can definitely, definitely taste it. Like I would never cook eggs with it, even though some people do. No, you can definitely taste the coconut and I love that. Um, but yeah, do whatever you want. You could probably just skip the coconut oil if you are not into that flavor. And then I chose to top them with a little more nuts because I chopped way too many and also it looks pretty. I was a little skeptical. I'm kind of one of those people that's like, just eat the Snickers bar if that's what you want because there's nothing that's gonna satisfy like the real deal. But I have to say, these were actually really good, very chewy. They did not have a strong date flavor. And so I, yeah, we tried around the campfire and everybody that ate one said it was really good. So there is a little bit of a healthier option for you. You'll see here in just a second, a few recipes and food ideas that we had while we were camping. But the most notable thing about this Stony Fork Creek campground, besides the four hour drive, was the creek. We were right by a creek that you actually had to drive through to get to your campsite. And the kids were just in there all weekend. Also, this weekend was very rainy. We rented my brother-in-law's camper and it was a very rainy weekend, but in the best way possible, if that makes sense. It would rain at random times and it, then it would be over. And it actually did not rain on our parade at all. <laughs> Meaning every time it rained, it was like a convenient time. One day we went out to a lookout at the PA Grand Canyon and you can see why it gets that name. This is just really beautiful. And we saw some birds flying. We did see a bald eagle down further, but that was not soaring around. And yeah, it was just nice to get out and about. We all wore our muck boots because we were sure it was gonna rain any second. And then when we got back, I made iced coffees for everyone. And the children wanted some too, so we just kind of improvised and gave them chocolate milk with whipped topping. Some of the food that we had around the campfire was nachos and salsa. And oh my goodness, this frog, one of the neighbor boys found it and was showing it to the kids. Ivani started out by petting it gingerly like this, and now she's like best friends with a frog. <gasps> oh, mom life, wow, I couldn't be me. One night we had kebabs by the fire and my cousin made those. There was veggies and steak and chicken and shrimp. For our breakfast that we made, we actually did make your own breakfast mountain pies in the mountain pie irons, but we brought along English muffins instead of bread. And then Josh was trying out his little gadget here from Amazon because he loves to make egg patties and it was not working at first. You can't scramble the eggs ahead of time. You have to just crack them in. That way the egg white holds everything together and it takes its shape. By the end, he was doing really good and they were perfectly round. But yeah, it did take a little finessing at first to figure out what we were doing. <laughs> How are you feeling about your egg prowess, Josh? <laughs>
And one day we took a bike ride along a rail trail and the weather was beautiful, it was perfect. We unloaded our bikes. We didn't bike that long because we started getting hot and we're like, you know where we'd rather be? We wanna be at the pool. So it wasn't too long and we had turned around again and we went back to the pool. And we swam at the pool for, I would say, 35, 40 minutes. And you saw how the sky had looked just, what, half an hour before? It started to look like this. The kids were done swimming anyway. For some reason, the pool was giving like a tingling, shocking feeling. So they weren't in super long. And guess what? We get back to our campsite and it starts pouring. Perfect timing. The kids were in their swimsuits. They just played in the creek in their swimsuits and ate their lunch outside. It was it was actually a really fun experience. I would never have ordered rain, but it worked out really well. And we just like chilled under our canopies. <laughs> Can you tell Miller was ready for his nap? And then before you knew it, the sun was back out again and the kids kept doing what they were doing, playing in the creek. Honestly, I did not see much of my big kids over the weekend. I mean, I watched them from a distance most of the time, but they played so well together with their friends. And of course, one of my favorite parts of camping is the campfire discussions. Of course, we had the rainbow flames and my friend made some homemade cinnamon roll bread, which was absolutely delicious. So what a journey. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me for this past month. Let me know down below a recipe that you don't have to make it. Don't put it on your list that it has to be like homework or anything, but let me know down below which recipe looked most appealing to you or one that you would love to try in the future. I'd love to hear. It helps me to curate better content for you guys in the future. Trust me, this video had no curation. This was real life. This is what I was actually making, eating, and doing. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.